Ashton Kutcher sure is close to some very serious predators for a man who co-founded a non-profit that is supposed to protect children from S trafficking and child SA. Do we think that Ashton Kutcher will write character letters for Diddy if he gets arrested and convicted of something? We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. They seem a little too close for comfort. Ashton Kutcher and Diddy are best friends. For decades, they've hung out, they've watched football together, and they've also partied hard every night and went on wild adventures. Actually, Ashton says that he has stories about Diddy that he can't ever tell. But now that Diddy's dark past is coming to haunt him, people are questioning Ashton Kutcher and what was he up to? I mean, he did support Danny Masterson and he's known to befriend evil Hollywood influences. So maybe Ashton is just as bad as Diddy. So let's get into it. If you aren't subscribed to the Let's Get Into It podcast, then you're only getting half the tea. For longer videos, deep dives, and of course, more of me, subscribe to the Let's Get Into It podcast listed in the description below. Now that Diddy is in big trouble, people are analyzing his life and the people he's associated with, those enablers. And today I want to talk about his relationship with a famous actor named Ashton Kutcher. We've actually talked about Ashton before on my channel because he and Mila Kunis thought it'd be a good idea to go and defend Danny Masterson after he was charged and convicted for R-wording a woman. So these are not good people and it kind of makes sense that their worlds are colliding. I mean, even Diddy was very friendly with Ellen. She's not a good person. There's definitely a clear dark side to Hollywood. And all of them are on the same team. But actually, Ashton and Diddy met because of punk the television show. While Diddy was forming the MTV singing competition Making the Band, the comedic actor was busy planning his next prank on unsuspecting celebrities. It all started over punk because he was like, yo, you can't punk me. And Ashton was like, I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's on the table. So that started their conversation and their friendship because Ashton was determined to get Diddy and to punk him. After Diddy's mild threat, the duo became fast friends, Ashton added. We used to hang out and watch football together. Ashton even had his hand in his bestie running in the New York City Marathon. Here's a clip of these two talking about their friendship. When did you first meet? I was doing Making the Band on MTV. He was doing Punked. Yeah. And... I gave him a call one day and I said, um, I heard that you are going to punk me and I, I just don't think that's a good idea. I feel like Diddy doesn't even like believe that he could not get punked, but I don't think he wants to be pranked because I don't think he wants to be caught, you know, unsuspecting at any time with all the bad things he's up to. So we were spending a lot of time together. By the way, if you're a single man, like there's, there's probably no greater human being in the world. Ahead. This is 20 years ago, 19 right. years ago. Yeah. And so it was, we were having a lot of fun together. Yeah, well, so. we were just, it wasn't just like going out, like doing things, you know, we, we, we were watching football games, hanging out, like we would go shop or whatever it was. So what Ashton is describing sounds like a genuine, like, bromance friendship. Like, just two guys that hang out and do normal things together. I mean, I don't know what he meant by a lot of fun, because I have fun with my friends. Like, we go shopping, like, you know, I'm working on my friendships, okay? But, like, you know, a lot of fun. I don't, I don't know if I've had that in a while. This report writes, Ashton Kutcher and Diddy used to party together a lot. Diddy and Ashton's friendship was not some Hollywood PR stunt cooked up to make the duo more famous. At the time, social media was not a thing and privacy was attainable. The rapper was known for his epic parties and Ashton had a lot of stories from those days. Unfortunately, he can't share them with the public. Well, shoot, he he might not even have to worry about the public if he's got the private investigators coming up and asking him what really went down. Diddy and Ashton at one point co-hosted the White Party in Beverly Hills on the 4th of July. It was an annual event that has been attended by many celebrities for many years. And it just kind of established their friendship in Hollywood and everyone knew them as a duo. <laughs> So knowing they have this friendship, they have these parties, knowing that Ashton defends Danny Masterson, what type of person is Ashton Kutcher? Is he just like, you know, up to the same stuff Diddy's into? Did he see Diddy doing it and was like, hey, I want to get in on this. And that's why he's got these 
crazy stories that he can't talk about. I am officially headed down the rabbit hole to learn more about the origins of this friendship. And I find it very interesting because Ashton Kutcher was recently exposed for writing a letter to the judge asking for leniency in Danny Masterson's R word sentencing while simultaneously being a founder and running a organization to protect people, especially children from becoming victims. It was so fascinating to me that Ashton Kutcher like was supporting Danny Masterson yet had an a nonprofit that was su supposed to help people get out of those type of like situations. And now we've got his friendship with Diddy and the same like establishment that Ashton was the face of and it combats everything that these other friends that he has, you know, have going for them. I mean, the Danny Masterson thing alone led Ashton to stepping down. He had to resign from his anti-sex trafficking nonprofit. His resignation was effective immediately from his role as a board chairman at Thorn, an organization whose goal is to address the role the internet plays in child trafficking and abuse. He actually founded this organization with his ex wife Demi Moore and it's fascinating to see that he's now like best pals with people who are being charged with these crimes. He said, I have determined the responsible thing for me to do is resign. I cannot allow my error and judgment to distract from our effort and the children we serve. And good thing he did step down because in his letter, he called Danny Masterson a role model and has been nothing but a positive influence on him, trying to get his sentencing a lot lesser, which is what happened with Drake Bell and Brian Peck. I mean, I know that's like off topic, but like Brian Peck got all of these letters and he ended up serving like 16 months when it should have been a lot longer, but all of these like Hollywood, you know, letters, this influence, it helps. It builds relationships with these judges and, you know, justice is never really served. Now, of course, this support led to a ton of backlash and I believe Ashton Kutcher is someone who really cares about his reputation and how people see him because he has been generally likable, at least from my perspective. I don't think he's been like, you know, seen as a jerk but when he does this it, it makes him look that way so of course him and mila issued their apology and did a little video just giving very much youtuber like i'm sorry like sit down and like be raw and real but do you think they really mean it especially when he's rolling with diddy we are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of danny masterson we support victims we have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read. Um, and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way. We would never want to do that. Personally, watching that video, it's hard for me to take it seriously, just knowing everything else. I think context is super important because if you were to see that, you would you'd think, you know, they're saying everything right. They're saying exactly what, you know, we want to hear. But when their actions don't match their words, then people don't really believe in them. And it creates this disingenuous relationship that like a creator entertainer has with their, you know, their audience. So essentially while he's doing the right things on paper, I think the other skeletons in his closet are coming about and there's really no way to explain those away. The sure is close to some very serious predators for a man who co-founded a nonprofit that is supposed to protect children from S trafficking and child SA. Do we think that Ashton Kutcher will write character letters for Diddy if he gets arrested and convicted of something? There's just a lot of hypocrisy happening here. I mean, Ashton Kutcher even addresses the global scourge of human trafficking, yet he's friends with Diddy. He went to the Rotary International Convention in Atlanta, Georgia to address a major human rights issue, which is human trafficking and modern day slavery. Kind of what Cassie was alluding to in her complaint against Diddy. Now, this nonprofit that Ashton founded hasn't always been on the right side of history. I mean, they put out an anti slavery campaign which we're all about the the movement 
but it was blasted by critics because it wasn't taken the right way. The public service announcement, which debuted in 2011, was unveiled on a website for the charity. Essentially, Donald Trump and Jamie Foxx, Eva Longoria, and so many other people were featured in the campaign. And there was a slogan, real men don't buy girls. And this entire campaign that like real men don't buy girls just completely turned into something that's so irrelevant and kind of mocking the initial message. I mean, why was Sean Penn featured in this ad in the first place? I mean, there are articles about his horrifying history of abuse. Madonna actually filed that Penn had allegedly physically harmed her, including claims that he had tied her to a chair for hours. Sean Penn's abusive behavior has a lot of documented evidence, so why was he ever included in an advertisement for this charity? I mean, not to get political, but Donald Trump has had a few cases against himself as well, so he's not really the best person to throw up there. And Justin Timberlake, I mean, hates women. We've talked about this in a podcast episode. You guys should go and check it out. We talk about how Justin Timberlake does not support women, does not support victims. He's not someone you want to include in a campaign for this. But I think that speaks to who Ashton Kutcher surrounds himself with because he is with the bad people. He's with Diddy. He's rolling with Diddy. He's rolling with Dave Masterson and all these other friends he got to join his ad for his nonprofit. There was some criticism when the ad came out, quote, there is a general dumbing down that is going on and this is an example of dumbing down a social justice movement with the narrowest message possible. Those men who are buying girls and children are P words. They are not going to be swayed by that campaign. They have got to have a campaign in which real men do not buy sex. You have to sacrifice wanting to be cool for wanting to be effective. And unfortunately, this kind of behavior of those people creating these nonprofits and resources are also part of the problem. I mean, it's weird that Ashton Kutcher took over Charlie Sheen's show. It was confusing to this user. I mean, Corey Feldman accused Charlie Sheen of harming Corey Haim in My Truth documentary. Another person, Jerry Sandusky, had a nonprofit for kids and was a predator himself. And he was found guilty on 45 counts. Yet this person had a nonprofit to protect kids. Yet he was the exact person harming them in the first place. This person added that Ashton also groomed Mila Kunis on that 70s show. He wrote a letter in support of Danny Masterson. How many more red flags do there need to be? There's also a clip of him on the Rosie O'Donnell show talking about a then underage Mila, which keep in mind, there is a five year age gap between them, which isn't that big of a deal, but it's a big deal when you're like 15 and 20. Like that's a big difference when, you know, the guy I'm dating, he's like five years older than me, but I'm like almost 30 years old. So it's not, you know, but uh, that when you're like a teenager and Ashton's like, you know, a 20 year old man, why would you be interested in a 15 year old? She was 14 when we started the show. I was like 19, right? Right. And they're like, okay, you guys are gonna be making out in this scene. And I'm like thinking like, wait, this is like slightly illegal, right? I was going to say, that's right? probably your first kiss ever, right? It was my first kiss. Why is someone bet you made with Danny about our first kiss? But let me tell you what All happened. Right, what no, let me no, tell no, you what happened. No, no, no. Okay, so I've never kissed yeah. a guy. So okay. I, was, I was so, I mean, you know. Oh, uh, I think like Ashton's kind of like, oh, God, I got myself in trouble talking about this. Ash was attractive and yeah. I was a 14-year-old little girl and I was extremely scared for my life. Sure. And it, he, he was very nice about it. He was like, oh, don't worry. So I was like, okay. Then Danny goes and goes, dude, I'll give you $10 if you French kiss her. What would you stick my stick your tongue in my mouth or some... What? No, 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 no. For $10. You're making it sound like it was... So she's 14. She describes herself as a little girl, and he is a 19-year-old. Grown man in her mind is how she's describing it. It's like really bad. It, okay, Dan, we had a little side bet yeah, going. Yeah, like, which was it wasn't very as to whether or not you know, like you know, you're kissing on the show or boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. You would use tongue, right, Rosie? Like, I mean, you would. You, you, it I depends mean, what kind of an actor you are. I absolutely, guess. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Danny bets me like 20 bucks that I wouldn't do it. And of hey. course I'm like, yeah, sure. What's the deal? You and know? then the cops showed up and you got arrested <laughs> pretty much. They Wait, should yeah. have. Wow. Even Rosie is calling them out back then. I mean, yeah, you would get arrested. Sure. I mean, I'm glad we're all like recognizing that. Yeah. It's still not wrong here. Like, why aren't people outraged? This person commented that Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher started a website to catch people words. I thought it was always sketchy because I've been knowing about Demi Moore. I bet the website is really to protect the pedos. And I must agree, there's something really wrong here whenever you think that these people have created websites and resources. Yeah, they're attending events like this where there's like young teenage girls stripping on stage, throwing their clothes off into the crowd, and you see... <laughs> 
over there. Um, Diddy and uh, uh, Danny Masterson. You see um, Ashton Kutcher all hanging out, having the best time. And it's just like, it shows that these weirdos really do roll together. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's so much more to talk about when it comes to Ashton Kutcher and even Demi Moore. I made a video about Demi Moore before, but then I got a strike on my channel. So then I avoided talking about her, but maybe we could talk about her in a way that wouldn't get us off the internet. I mean, we're about to hit a million subscribers, so I don't want to mess that up. You know what I mean, guys? We worked really hard for this, you know, together. So um, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye, guys.